The Yoga for Daily Evening Prayer is found beginning on page 22, the Book of Common Prayer. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left and done those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared of the mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall put forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The portion of the Psalter appointed for the evening of the twenty-fifth day begins with the tenth part of Psalm 119. Found beginning on page 494 of the Book of Common Prayer. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. O oh, give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have put my trust in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou of very faithfulness hast caused me to be troubled. O let thy merciful kindness be my comfort, according to thy word unto thy servant. O let thy loving mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be confounded, for they go wickedly about to destroy me but I will be occupied in thy commandments. Let such as fear thee, and have known thy testimonies, be turned unto me. O oh, let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. My soul hath longed for thy salvation, and I have a good hope because of thy word. Mine eyes long sore for thy word, saying, O oh, when wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou be avenged of them that persecute me? The proud have dig pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are true. They persecute me falsely, O be thou my help. They have almost made an end of me upon earth. But I forsook not thy commandments. O oh, quicken at me after thy loving kindness, and so shall I keep the testimonies of thy mouth. O oh, Lord, thy word endureth forever in heaven. Thy truth also remaineth from one generation to another. Thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinance, for all things serve thee. If my delight had not been in the law, I should have perished in my trouble. I will not forget thy commandments, for with them thou hast quickened me. 
I am thine, O Savior, for I have sought thy commandments. The ungodly laid wait for me to destroy them, but I will consider thy testimonies. I see that all things come to an end, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. Lord, what love have I under thy law? All the day long is my study in it. Though through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than my teachers, for thy testimonies are my study. I am wiser than the aged, because I keep thy commandments. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep thy word. I have not shrunk from thy judgments, for thou teachest me. Oh, how sweet are thy words unto my throat, yea, sweeter than honey unto my mouth. Through the, thy commandments I get understanding, therefore I hate all evil ways. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here we get at the 48th chapter of the first book of Moses called Genesis. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Jacob said unto Joseph, God Almighty appeared unto me at long to the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee in the Egypt, are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. And thy issue, which thou begettest after them, shall be thine, and shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Paddan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way, when yet there was but a little way to come unto Ephraim. And I buried her there in the land of Ephraim. The same is Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, who are these? And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me in this place. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God hath showed me also thy seed. And Joseph brought them up from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hand wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lands, and let my name be named on them and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he shall become great. But truly this younger brother shall be greater than he and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die. 
but God shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite with my sword and with my bow. Irenus, the first lesson. The Magnificat on page 26. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For he Macedonia, 
No church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from me, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. We read at the second lesson. The Duke of Midas, on page 28. Lord, thou lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to whom thy word. For thy eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to light in the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. For it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, make clean our hearts within us. Take now thy Holy Spirit from us. God, the first Sunday in Lent. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh, being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness to thy honor and glory. Who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. God for us, Wednesday. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, to the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Like thy darkness, he receives thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy. 
defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the law of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thy unwilling servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that new sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time of one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore.